Hello everybody, welcome back to another tier list. Today we are going to be taking a look at the discography of the English rock band Ride. Ride is a band that was a pivotal contribution to the shoegaze movement in the early 90s, and then they veered off and dipped their toes into a couple of other genres throughout the middle and later half of their discography, and that's a fairly common trend that you see with a lot of groups that came out of the early 90s shoegaze scene, and anytime a band evolves their sound that much, it always makes for an interesting listen through their discography. So what I'm going to do today is go through all six of their studio albums from Nowhere up to This Is is not a safe place and I'll score each of them on this tier list with S being the highest and D being the lowest and I'll talk a little bit about each album let you know my thoughts and we will see where we end up and please let me know your thoughts in the comments as well I'm very curious to see where you would rank these six albums so please let me know all right I think that's about it let's jump right into it Okay, starting out, we have their debut studio album from 1990 titled Nowhere. Obviously, this one is getting an S, no big surprises there. This is a really amazing album and a very impressive debut album for a group to put out. This is very commonly regarded as one of the best shoegaze albums of all time, and on most websites that'll do a listing of the top shoegaze albums, this one usually always makes the top three. And while I do really love this album, I have always felt that it is a tad overrated. And there are a lot of people that do share that same sentiment. I have seen a lot of debate online over this album, and I do tend to fall more on the side of thinking that it is a little bit overrated. Uh, for me personally, it would probably be a contender for my top 10 shoegaze albums. There are definitely a good handful of other shoegaze albums that I do enjoy more, um, but it just wouldn't make my top three. But that really just comes down to personal preference, and at a certain point, regardless of that, it does not take away from the fact that this is an amazing album. It was done under the Creation record label with production from Mark Waterman, and up to this point, they had released three EPs that were all very successful and really helped to put their name on the map and build some momentum and anticipation for their future music releases. And now this is their first full-length studio album, and they certainly delivered on it. We have eight songs, starting with Seagull, which brings things in really nicely with a hard-hitting track with these beautiful layered guitar parts and really lush vocal harmonies. A great opener that starts everything off on a really good energy. And then we go into Kaleidoscope, which is another higher energy track that has some really dreamy elements to it between the guitar and vocal harmonies. And for me, that is a key element of Ride's sound and has always been one of my favorite elements, the way that the vocal harmonies and the guitar parts overlap. And I think that, combined with the shoegazy mix and production, creates such a beautiful combination of sounds. Then we bring things down a bit with the very effectively placed track, In a Different Place. This is a very pretty song that provides a great detour stylistically from the first two tracks and shows us the more mellow side of Ride. And then that is followed by Polar Bear, a song with some more psychedelic elements with the panned guitar parts and the interesting shuddering guitar effect. So within the first four tracks, I think they did a great job of showing us a few different sides to their sound, but doing it in a very cohesive manner. Then after that, we have Dreams Burned Down, a very pretty track and probably my favorite track on the album from a production standpoint. Everything just sounds so massive on this song. I really love the production. And then from this point on, we have my favorite part of the album from track six through eight. All three of these songs are my three favorite tracks on the album, and they're all back to back. So for me, the ending chunk is really the high point of the album, and I'm curious if other people agree. But we start with Decay, which is a super dark and intense song, and a song that I've always considered to be the unsung hero of this album. I feel like this song doesn't get that much love, but I consider it to be one of the best songs on here. The song is basically a two minute long build, and then when it finally goes into that final section, it just feels so intense and and so satisfying. Really amazing and badass drumming on this one as well from Lawrence Colbert. Then we go into Paralyzed, another song that I absolutely love. I particularly love the chord progression on the opening vocal section. One of my favorite chord progressions from this album. It has a really dark and mysterious sort of nature to it, and I really love the vocal melody on top of it as well. It produces this really eerie and mysterious sound that I just love so much. And then we conclude with hands down my favorite song from this album, 
and many other people's favorite song as well with Vapor Trail. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful songs that Ride has ever written. Everything about this song is perfect. The dreamy guitar sounds, the beautiful and emotive vocal melody, the incredible production and the intensity between the bass and the drums. When the bass and drums enter, it just hits so good and just feels perfect. Really a perfectly produced, written, and performed song in my opinion, and possibly my favorite ride song too. I know it's a cliche choice, but I think that so many people love this song for good reason. This song is absolutely amazing, and a perfect conclusion to their first album. They could not have ended this on a better song. So like I said, incredible album, not in my top three favorite shoegaze albums like so many websites and so many people have it, but certainly would be a contender for my top 10 list, and an album that has certainly left its mark and influence on the shoegaze movement and on British rock music as a whole. And it is certainly an album that I cannot say any bad things about. So amazing debut album. This one gets an easy S. Okay, next we have their second studio album from 1992 titled Going Blank Again. This is another one that gets an easy S. I absolutely love this album, and I actually like this one even more than Nowhere. I know there's a lot of debate in the ride community over which one of these two albums is better, and I've always fallen more on the side of Going Blank Again. It just resonates with me a bit more, and for me personally, I think the quality of the songs is even stronger on here. Between Nowhere and this album, they had released one other easy EP titled Today Forever, and they also released a single called Leave Them All Behind. And on these two recordings, you hear their sound continue to evolve more and more, and you hear all of these different influences coming into fruition. And I think this album showcased more of that, which is why I do find it more enjoyable than Nowhere. It still contains that shoegaze foundation, but also ventures off into dream pop and psychedelic in a very tasteful manner. And because of the success of Leave Them All Behind as a single, they had decided to also use that as the first track to the album, which is an amazing opener. It starts out with the sequenced keyboard notes, and it works its way into a nice driving groove, bringing everything in really nicely. This song really takes its time over eight minutes and lets you really sink into the vibe of it. And then track two is also the second single from the album, Twisterella. This one takes a completely different turn and has these really beautiful power pop elements to it. And the sound of Ride doing a track like this stylistically combined combined with the amazing production of Alan Mulder, just created such a beautiful song. Then after that we have Not Phased, which sort of dances between shoegaze and Britpop in a very fascinating contrast. I've always found the first section to sound much more Britpop, and then the second section almost goes into the shoegaze territory. A very cool song with a really interesting contrast from section to section. Then we change it up again with an acoustic-centered track titled Chrome Waves. A very cool song with some really euphoric sounding keyboards. Great mixture of keyboards and acoustic guitars as well. So within these first four tracks, we have already heard so many different things stylistically, but I'm loving it all. I think it all fits together, and I think that their songwriting was on top of their game at this point. Then we have another more driving, poppy sort of track called Mousetrap. Some of the guitar parts on this one has always reminded me of the Beatles, and we know that the Beatles were a big influence on Andy Bell, so it's certainly possible that he got some inspiration from them for this track. I also really love the vocal harmonies against the guitar progression. I think it sounds so pretty. And then we keep the energy up with Time of Her Time, a cool track that sounds like something that could have been on Nowhere. And I really enjoy everything on here, but if I had to pick one least favorite song on this album, it would probably be this one. This is usually the one song that I don't get as excited for, but everything else on here is so incredible and so strong that I don't really think it negates the album at all. And I don't dislike the song either, I just don't find it as strong as everything else on here. Then after that, we have my favorite song on here titled Cool Your Boots. One of my favorite ride songs and another song that I think is the unsung hero from this album. To me, this song has everything that I'm looking for in a great ride song. Really pretty guitar progressions and layered parts, a beautiful and euphoric vocal melody, interesting drum parts, and really dreamy production. Another perfect ride song, in my opinion, and the highlight of this album for me. Then we go back into the Britpop sort of realm with Making Judy Smile, a cool feel-good song, probably the most feel-good song on this album, which provides a nice change of 
of pace from Cool Your Boots. Then we have Time Machine, which takes us on all sorts of different rides, really showcasing their psychedelic rock influences, opening up with almost a minute of ambient sounds, which eventually turn into a very short and chilled out groove. And then that changes up again into something more hard hitting with a distorted bass line and some sequenced keyboard chords and acoustic guitar. A really great example of combining the psychedelic rock writing with some of their more foundational shoegaze elements as well in a very effective way. Then the album concludes with OX4, which is a seven minute track, which also has a very deceptive intro, setting up a section that you think is going to go somewhere, but then completely abandoning it and swelling into this really euphoric and feel good groove with some really beautiful vocal melodies and harmonies. The song really takes its time and does a great job of building and then just ends the album album on such a beautiful and hopeful sort of mood. So like I said, I love this album. I think it's even better than Nowhere. I do find myself going back to this one more often than I do with Nowhere. But again, that certainly does not negate Nowhere from being an incredible album in its own respect. And you know, the fact that they have two albums that would make my top 10 favorite shoegaze albums list is pretty impressive. So just for me personally, with my preference, I like this one a little bit more. But regardless of which one is better, they are both incredible albums. So this one, again, gets an easy S. All right, next we have their third studio album from 1994 titled Carnival of Light. And unfortunately, I'm going to give this one a C. This is a tricky album for me because there are a couple of things that I do like about it, but also a lot of things that I struggle with as well. So a little backstory about this album. After the release of Going Blank Again, Ride was doing really well. They were at a high point in their musical career. And then at a certain point, things started going badly for them. They had a single that they put out that charted pretty poorly. And because of that one reason, Creation Records just suddenly stopped promoting Going Blank Again again out of nowhere and that led them to tour a lot more to promote the album and because of that they suffered from exhaustion and really burnt themselves out and that would lead to an extended period of time off from music and sort of threw off the momentum that they had developed up to that point but at the same time burnout can be no joke especially if you're going way too hard so the break can certainly be understandable on their part uh, they performed very little in 1993 and because shoegaze had started fizzling fizzling out more and a lot of bands were modifying their sounds, Ride would end up doing the same thing and that would culminate into the release of this album. So stylistically, this album is much more on the Britpop and psychedelic rock sort of realm with very little of that shoegaze sound that we had heard in the first two releases. We have 12 tracks and for me, I just found a lot of the songs on this album to be just uninteresting, skip over tracks, and I think the psychedelic and Britpop elements that they had incorporated on Going Blank again again, were far superior to anything on this album. There are a few songs that I do like on this album here and there, but they're sandwiched in between so many songs that I don't care for, which really takes away from the momentum of this album for me. I really like the opening track, Moonlight Medicine. I also enjoy 1000 Miles. I think it has some pretty guitar and vocal parts, and it sounds like a 70s rock song. I also like Birdman, but after that, from that point on, I find the remainder of the album very underwhelming. And up to that point, all of my favorite songs have already happened on the album. The only other moments that I enjoy are the last two tracks. Rolling Thunder is a very surprising and psychedelic instrumental track that is very cool on its own. And then I don't know where it comes from. I think that's a fine sounding poppy track and a good song to wrap the album up with. So I do like the opening and closing track. And there are three tracks in between those that I don't mind. But unfortunately, that doesn't even account for half of this album. So there really is a good handful of songs on here that I'm just not crazy about. And even the songs that I do like on here, none of them would be regarded as any of my favorite ride tracks. But the five songs that I do like, I do find enjoyable and do showcase some cool versatility in the songwriting of Ride. So not a great album, in my opinion. This one will get a C. Okay, next we have their fourth studio album from 1996 titled Tarantula. And unfortunately, I'm going to give this one a D. I have a really hard time with this album, and I do consider it to be a huge downgrade from their first two releases. So after the release of Carnival of Light, 
That album definitely got a smaller response than their first two releases, and because of that, tension had started to develop in the band, and there were some disagreements between Mark and Andy as to what direction they wanted to go in moving forward, and Andy would end up doing the majority of the vocals on this album, and unfortunately, these disagreements would eventually lead to them breaking up as a band after they recorded this album. This album was released shortly after they had split up, and I think that just because of the tension that was in the band at the time, I don't think that they were producing their best material, and I also think that the tracks throughout this album really show you that there was a lot of disagreement as to where to go stylistically, because to me, a lot of these songs sound very different from one another. There's 12 songs on here, and of the 12, there's really only four that I don't mind, and those songs are the opener, Black Knight Crash, as well as Deep Inside My Pocket, the Dawn Patrol, and Ride the Wind. My favorite song on here is Deep Inside My Pocket. I think that's a pretty solid song, but nothing on here is really standout or exceptional to me. A lot of very boring skip-over tracks, and unfortunately, an album that was just put out at a very bad time for this band. But luckily, this did not end up being their final album, so we cannot say that they went out on a bad album. We have two more to explore, and they have two more chances to redeem themselves from this one and we will find out if that is the case very shortly. So, not a great album, unfortunately. This one gets a D. Okay, so after their breakup, everyone would go their separate ways, and some would put out solo albums, while others would go back to regular 9-to-5 life, and Andy would actually end up playing bass for Oasis until they would split up. And eventually, all of the drama that had happened between everyone in the group would die down as the years went by, and eventually they would reunite in 2015 and they would put on a bunch of shows and eventually start working on a new album which would culminate into this, their fifth studio album from 2017 titled Weather Diaries. And I'm gonna give this one an A. I really like this album a lot, and I think it's a very significant improvement from their previous two releases. This is by far the longest gap that they had in between albums, with their last album being in 1996. So Ride fans had to wait over 20 years for this to come out, and I think it was worth the wait. I think it's a great album. Stylistically, I really enjoy what they did on this one. Much different from the previous two releases, and we definitely get some tracks that have more of that shoegaze sound, and there are definitely moments that feel like the ride that everybody knows and loves from their first two albums. Certainly not a full-blown shoegaze album. It incorporates a lot of different elements that sound very refined and matured, and it seems like on this album they were really able to take all of their musical differences and different influences and combine them into something really great. In addition to some of the shoegaze sounds, we also have some dream pop elements, as well as the alternative rock flavors and maybe some slight Britpop elements as well, but nowhere near as much Britpop as we had heard on Tarantula. I think the music still contains all of those elements that I love from the early Ride albums, but it also sounds very fitting for the time that it was released as well. I think the production is really crisp, and I really enjoy the majority of this album. The only two songs on here that are sort of skip-over tracks for me are Rocket Silver Symphony and Lateral Alice. I think the opening five tracks are incredibly strong and do a great job of blending all of those different elements that I had mentioned from one track to the next. I also really enjoy how the album ends on a more chill and subdued vibe where the first three tracks are more high energy and I think the quality of songwriting has significantly improved compared to Carnival of Light and Tarantula. My favorites on here are Cali, Lanoi Point, and All I Want. So a very good album and a very big improvement from what we heard up to that point. But I still do like their first two releases more, so it wouldn't have felt right putting this in S tier. But certainly the best album that they have put out since 1992, in my opinion. And a very pleasant surprise for Ride fans. So this one gets an A. Okay, now we have their sixth studio album from 2019 titled This Is Not A Safe Place. And I will give this one an A. I really enjoy this one as well. This is a very interesting and engaging album. It's very surprising and unpredictable from track to track, and they really expanded their sound and went into some new territories that we haven't heard before. Between the wide use of different synthesizer sounds as well as the heaviness of some of these songs, I think this album features a couple of songs that might be Ride's heaviest and darkest songs to date, which is so awesome to hear at this point in their discography. And the majority of the album is definitely not all within that dark and 
heavy mood, but there are definitely a couple of tracks on here that I think are uniquely heavy by ride standards, and it's one of my favorite elements of this album as well. Throughout these tracks, we sort of veer between a couple of different moods. We have some of those hard-hitting and darker tracks that I mentioned with the opener, R-I-D-E, as well as Kill Switch and Endgame. And then we have some more dreamy and vibey sort of tracks with Future Love, Clouds of St. Marie, Eternal Recurrence, Jump Jet, and In This Room. And then there's also a handful of songs that sort of veer in between various different flavors of rock with songs like Repetition, 15 Minutes, Dial Up, and Shadows Behind the Sun. And while there is so much different stuff going on stylistically throughout this album, I think they pieced it together in a very effective manner, and as a group of tracks, I think they all work off of each other very nicely and make for a very adventurous and engaging listen. I would say that I like this album pretty much the same as Weather Diaries. I've always had a hard time picking one over the other, and they both have a lot of things that I really like about them, and pretty much have the same ratio of liked to disliked tracks as well. I enjoy just about every song on here with the exception of like two tracks. My favorites on here are the opener, R-I-D-E, as well as Future Love, Clouds of St. Marie, Jump Jet, and In This Room, which I think is a strong and beautiful closer to this great album. Future Love would probably make my top five favorite ride songs too. I really love that song so much. To me, it's like the vapor trail of this album. So I can't say enough good things about that song. And another very good album from Ride. It's so great to see that within these past two releases, they were really able to pick up the pieces from where they left off with Tarantula and deliver us two great albums with really high quality and refined sounding tracks. So a great album. This one gets an A. All right, we did it. We went through their six studio albums, and this is what I came up with. And lucky for us, Ride is still very active. They're currently on tour, and they have announced that they do plan on recording a seventh album, which is very exciting news because I think Ride has achieved a revival in their sound with their two most recent albums, and I think they have a lot more great music in store for us, and I can't wait to see what they do next. And this is certainly not the first time that we've seen a group that was a pivotal part of the late 80s and early 90s shoegaze movement take a long break in their discography and then come back 10 to 20 years later with some really fresh sounding stuff. We've seen that happen with some of the most important shoegaze groups like Slow Dive, Swerve Driver, and even My Bloody Valentine. So it's an exciting time to be a ride fan, to say the least, and I think we have a lot of great stuff to look forward to with them. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and hopefully you came away with a couple of new facts about this group. And like I said, please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I would love to hear where you rank these six albums, and if you have any agreements or disagreements on my opinions, please let me know. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. And if you're interested, feel free to check out some of my other tier lists and see if there's anything that you like. I will have them linked in the description and in the comments as well. All right, that's it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you at the next video. Take care.